Good afternoon, distinguished delegates, uh, esteemed panelists, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this side event, Keeping the Online World Safe. My name is Kemal Hussainovic. I'm Chief of Department for Infrastructure, Enabling Environment, ICT Applications, including Cybersecurity, and I will be moderator for this session. As the title suggests, the topic of this session is cybersecurity, and will be focused on how you, as a part of ITUD community, can guide and support the ITUD work toward achieving a global culture of cybersecurity and help ITUD and its secretariat, BDT, to better fulfill its mandate. The 55 minutes session today will feature experts representing administrations and the community at large, and I will introduce them, each of them in due course. <coughs> As we don't have much time, let me quickly go through the format of this event. We have a pleasure to have here with us Deputy to the Director of BDT, and he is going to provide an opening remarks. After that, we are going to give an opportunity to each of the panelists to provide their remarks in four or five minutes. I'm at your disposal and at service of the panelists too. Uh, with, uh, to be in a position to ask a few questions to the panelists, uh, to instigate a dialogue, as we want to have uh, as much uh, interaction as possible. I will encourage you to ask question, questions the, to the panelists. Without any further delay, allow me to introduce you to Mr. Yushi Torigoe, Deputy to the Director of uh, ITU Telecommunication Development Bureau. Yushi, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hussainovic. <coughs> Excellencies, uh, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, it's my great pleasure to join uh, this event on cybersecurity uh, organized in occasion of World Telecommunication Development Conference 2017. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my sincere appreciation uh, to the government of Argentina for hosting uh, WTGC 17 in the beautiful city of uh, Buenos Aires. As the internet is an open medium where information flows freely ac across the borders, many threats faced online by countries have an international dimension. To prevent use of ICT for criminal purposes, it is necessary for governments to work together with private sector and academia, among others, and build effective cooperative relations to reduce threats in accessing digital services. Over the past decade, progress has been made in the promotion of international and regional tools aimed at improving global cybersecurity. Countries increasingly recognize the importance of key mechanisms such as harmonized legal frameworks at the regional and international level, national cybersecurity strategies, and information and knowledge sharing. However, there is still a sort of cybersecurity gap where some countries are lagging behind and having difficulties in keeping up with a fast growing cybercrime trend. In particular, despite the increased number of cyber attacks reported to a broad range of entities such as government, <coughs> banks, public and utility services which runs critical infrastructure and private companies, some countries still have difficulties in mitigating cyber risk. As a consequence, there is still a visible gap between countries in terms of knowledge, awareness, and cap capacity to deploy strategies, capacities, and programs in the field of cybersecurity, which could ensure a safe and secure use of ICT, which could in turn lead to economic growth. The potential use of the digital space for criminal purpose is now real threat 
for every country in the world that is not able to properly respond, and large-scale cyber attacks to national critical infrastructure could have devastating, long-lasting damage. In order to prevent such damage, ITU is making every effort to share the experience and expertise with our members by fostering dialogues and promoting international cooperation. I would like to mention ITU's key initiatives uh, contributing to this endeavor. Uh, first, the National Cyber Security Strategy is a multi-stakeholder effort aimed at aggregating existing guide toolkits and publications <coughs> on national cyber security strategies into an internationally recognized product that would serve as a platform for governments and any interested institution to develop national cyber security strategies. Second, Global Cyber Security Index, uh, GCI, is an initiative to measure the commitment of countries to cyber security. Through the information collected, each country's level of development, deployment is analyzed with five categories, legal, technical, organizational, capacity building, and cooperation aspects. The uniqueness of GCI is not only to rank countries and foster improvements at the national level, but more importantly, to share good practices to be used by country in need. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, enhanced cooperation in this area has become essential. Such cooperation requires efforts to bring together countries and all relevant parties to share their knowledge and capacity with a view to minimizing cyber risk. ITU is providing assistance and facilitating sharing knowledge between different parties. We firmly believe that member states can benefit significantly from sharing their experiences. I would like to call all of you to join this initiative to enhance our cybersecurity knowledge and capacity together. Thank you very much for your attention. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Turgoyepov, for setting the stage for the further discussion. Now it's time to go to the court of the session, introducing the panelists. But before that, let me just emphasize the two topics that Mr. Turgoy just mentioned. It is a national cybersecurity strategy project, and ITU is a facilitator of this project, and global cybersecurity index. So, this uh, national cybersecurity strategy project should be should harmonize all existing guidelines, uh, publications, and uh, best practices in a format that should be a new product, or, uh, international product agreed among the ITU and the partners who are working together with ITU on this product. GCI, Global Cybersecurity Index, is a, a certain way of measuring the commitment and uh, efforts that countries are doing in order to increase the level of cybersecurity and to build the confidence and trust in the, in, the, in the societies. So there are four categories, actually, that should be mentioned in order to uh, instigate the discussion today. It's a capacity of the legal measures, Organizational, organizational measures, institutional measures, capacity building, and the fourth one is cooperation, international cooperation. The session, therefore, will try to address topics around the need to build and implement national cybersecurity strategies and build the capacity by sharing experiences and practices and by gathering and, and analyzing efforts undertaken by member states on cybersecurity. I have the honor to have with us today, let me introduce our speakers on my right side. It's not from the left to the right, it's just a random <laughs> announcement of the speakers. So first is Mrs. Heather Butler, Assistant Director, EU, European Union and International Cybersecurity Policy, Department for Culture, Media from United Kingdom. It's uh, Jefferson Fouad Nassif next to me. 
Head of International Affairs Office, Anatel from Brazil. Liceu uh, France, Office of the, uh, the Coordinator for Cyber Issues at U.S. United States Department of State from United States of America. Verengai, Mr. Verengai Mabika, Senior Policy Advisor from ISOC. All our panelists today have extensive experience on cybersecurity, and I'm sure they will provide a valuable contribution to the session. I would like to request all of them to provide four to five minute statement on their views and experience on cybersecurity, starting from their role within the organization they belong to. Let's start with Heather. Heather, you have the floor, please. Thank you, um, and, and, and thank you to the ITU for having us here today at this presentation. Um, it's great to see so many people in the room and interested in, in this really important subject. Uh, so I thought I would present today by giving you an overview on our recently published um, UK National Cyber Security Strategy. Um, so some context to this. In 2015, we in the UK published our national security strategy, and that strategy is a strategy that looks beyond uh, cybersecurity and at all uh, security threats. And in that strategy, we identified cyber attacks as being a top national security threat. So, following on from this, the UK produced its new national cybersecurity strategy in November 2016. And that was our second uh, UK national level cybersecurity strategy. That strategy is supported by significant transformative investment, almost double the amount that we had actually put in in investment over the previous five years. In terms of our overarching vision for this strategy, we have articulated this as being that we want to see the UK as being secure and resilient to cyber threats, prosperous and confident in the digital world. Our strategy itself is split up into three pillars, um, to defend against cyber threats, to deter our adversaries and to develop our skills and capabilities. And as part of this, um, we also see international partnerships as being an important element of our national strategy. The strategy itself sets out new approaches and new elements. And I'll just say a little bit about why we have chosen to take a new approach. On reflection of where we were at when we were looking at the drafting of the new strategy, we determined that the UK was not keeping pace with the changing and increasing threat. We also felt that market forces were not driving the pace and the scale of action that was needed to tackle the threat in the short term. And the strategy sets out the need for greater intervention to be led by the government. So moving on to the what, and I'll explain a little bit about what some of the new elements are within that strategy. Firstly, we have um, simplified the, the government role and improved it. Um, one really important thing that we have done is we've created the National Cyber Security Centre, and this is a part of GCHQ, our security services, and it's the single point of advice in Her Majesty's government on cyber security, and it offers world-class incident management capabilities. We've also increased our technical defences, so we look to support industry to develop active cyber defense capabilities, which will automatically tackle phishing, block malicious domains and IP addresses and disrupt malware attacks. We're also looking at the right levers. So we want to ensure that we have the right regulatory framework in place to ensure that organizations across the UK can protect themselves from cyber attacks. And I've already mentioned investment. So we've increased funding for intelligence and law enforcement. To we're looking to close the cyber skills gap to support the UK cyber security sector and make sure that the public understands how to stay cyber safe. So I'll just say a little bit more in detail about what those pillars involve. So firstly, defend against cyber threats. What does this mean? This is active cyber defence measures implemented by industry that automatically protect UK internet users from the vast majority of high volume, low sophistication cyber attacks. 
We're also looking to ensure that all new government digital services will be secure by default. We're offering greater support to our CNI, critical national infrastructure, and other premium groups from the economy and society through the creation of the aforementioned National Cybersecurity Centre. And we're looking to be better joined up on incident management capability again through the National Cybersecurity Centre. Moving on to the second pillar, deter our adversaries. What does this mean? So we've established offensive cyber capabilities that can be deployed at the time and the place, our place of choosing. We're looking to identify and disrupt terrorist cyber, cyber actors, and we're also continuing to invest in law enforcement capability in order to tackle cybercrime. And finally, the third pillar, our skills and capabilities. We are seeking to encourage an innovative, growing cybersecurity industry, which is underpinned by world-leading scientific research and development. We're looking to create a self-sustaining pipeline of talent, providing the skills that we need in order to protect our national needs across the public and the private sectors. And finally, we're developing cutting-edge analysis and expertise to enable the UK to meet and overcome future threats and challenges. And just to finish, I, I would just say a little bit about our national cybersecurity sector, which is a key part of, of our strategy and runs through this. So the national cybersecurity sector draws cybersecurity into a single expert organisation. It brings our CERT function alongside lots of other different technical functions. It was launched in October 2016, and it's based in London and also in Cheltenham, some joint headquarters. And the National Cybersecurity uh, Centre's goals are to reduce the cybersecurity risk to the UK, to respond effectively to cyber incidents, to reduce harm to the UK, to understand the cybersecurity environment, share knowledge, and address systemic vulnerabilities. We're looking to build the UK's cybersecurity capability by providing leadership on key national cybersecurity issues. And I think I will close there and pass back to the chair. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, dear Heather. Uh, I would like just to remind our distinguished speakers to stay stick with the four minutes, otherwise we will not have enough time for the questions from the audience. So it will be good to announce the director of BDT who just joined us, and uh, maybe if he doesn't like to speak, that's fine, but he's here. So I would like to ask you to give him an applause for joining us. Thank you. Our next speaker is our distinguished colleague from Brazil uh, that I introduced earlier, Jefferson. Jefferson is uh, tightly linked to the work of the ITU in many areas, so I'm glad to see you here, Jefferson, to, to say a few words about your experiences in, in related to the cybersecurity issues. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Kamal, and it's very uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here and um, well, to, to have some words uh, here in this audience. Uh, it gives a, a glimpse of the importance of the subject to see this room um, almost full and uh, it's extremely important the subject, that's why everybody is here. Uh, and also the, uh, the number of high level interventions that we listened during the first days of this conference uh, reflects the importance of cybersecurity for all of us, mainly our governments that need to respond to many challenges that cybersecurity imposes on. Um, um, well, I have to say that uh, cybersecurity, uh, I'm, I'm very curious <coughs> and I'm studying this a lot and I, and I, and I must say that uh, I'm specializing in this issue, in this issue because of ITU. When I first uh, chaired the group in, the, in, in Wicked, for cybersecurity, and then I, I realized that I, I should I should uh, study more this issue. And after that, um, I realized that we we should have been doing more in Brazil, especially in the regulatory agency, which is my, my agency, Anatel. We should do more there. And then I, I started to, to to learn a lot from you. Uh, many of you in this audience are, are with me in in the ITU discussion, so I'm. I'm listening and always learning with you all. Well, um, uh, regarding the the aspect, I would like to just to, to to put some context on where we are uh, in terms of cybersecurity. 
And, uh, and then I would like to pass very fastly to what we are doing in Brazil, which is not so much as all the colleagues, but uh, we, are in the, we are starting. But I think that we should uh, put in context, in the context of cybersecurity, th there are many perspectives, many approaches. You can see this in terms of um, cyber defense, you can see this in terms of cyber crime. No matter the perspective you put, uh, the challenges are immense. Numbers are immense as well. Uh, some people say, uh, some reports we, we can read uh, saying that uh, the world is, is losing something related to uh, 400 to 600 billion dollars in cybercrime. So the numbers um, uh, for cyber defense as well uh, are immense, so we, we really need to, to deal with this subject. And because we are in the basis of every aspect of cyber security, we are, as telecommunication, the basis where everything is transported, so uh, that's why it's so important for us. The moment is very appropriate for us to discuss cybersecurity. It's been even more important after uh, the attacks of, uh, of cyber, uh, cyber worms and, and other threats. Uh, there's only one that I would like to, to put, with, which was uh, WannaCry. The WannaCry was a complete, complete change of what we understand of what is a, is a worm in, in our networks. And it happened and it, was, it, it got worse because of the lack of communications that, that we have and how difficult it is for industry and for governments and for all the, uh, the, the protection schemes that we have uh, to, to follow the subject, to, to follow the virus. And, and to say to all the world what, what is going on and what is the imminence of attack. So that's, that's a huge problem that we have to solve. Um, I'd like to, uh, to say also that really impressed me the words of the Prime Minister Theresa May when, when she, after the attacks uh, in London, she urged the collaboration between the, the, uh, the companies, the high-tech companies, and the government. That would be uh, their words and I'm, which I'm, I agree, uh, extremely important to deal with the, the threats um, we, we all see. Well, the, all their attacks that we, we saw was extremely uh, important to us and have to, to make us all uh, think on Estonia, Georgia, Ukraine, the attacks on Sony, the Stuxnet, Flame, they are all different. They are different nature put us, in, in terms of objectives, put us um, to think on uh, the diverse and the complexity of, 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 the, the, of things. Well, um, there's a very good uh, phrase that I've uh, uh, devoted to Ambrose Bis in the 19th century. He said that the war is a good way of teaching us geography. If we could um, put this word in this 21st on cybersecurity issues, we could say that the cyber attacks against us are God's way of teaching us how weaker en enemies are stronger than they seem. Now, there are many rules, uh, laws, and politics, and practices that are in development nowadays, but uh, we have some challenges, and it's a challenge that we have to face in a very sincere way. The, the first challenge is to connect the readers of Foreign Affairs magazine. Some, some people here may know this magazine. It's a very uh, important magazine that discusses uh, international politics with the people that read Wired. <laughs> so this is the great challenge. Huh? We have to put technologies with politicians and international politicians together in order to, to solve this extremely difficult uh, issue. Uh, trying to find roles and responsibilities between the public sector and the private sector is also extremely important. The networks are in the hands of, public, of the private sector, so we must deal with this very fastly. We have to find um, concepts on uh, security, defense, and, and, um, and splitting and sharing responsibilities between this. So uh, uh, let's, let's try to find exact words for cybersecurity what cybersecurity is, and what cyber defense is, and um, what, uh, what are the roles. So we, we should try to, to, to split the roles and responsibility. We are not uh, 
especially here in ITU, we're not dealing with cyber uh, defense at all. And if we want any kind of international cooperation on cyber security, we must deal uh, with, we have to, to, to have to bear in mind the differences between cyber defense and cyber security. Well, in terms of Brazil, we are working on a national digital strategy. It's, it is actually now in, in a public consultation. There we have a specific chapter for cybersecurity. Uh, and in this, uh, in this document, we are uh, trying to have at least uh, uh, initial words, initial, th initial thoughts on what should uh, be dealt in Brazil in terms of cyber, cyber security. Uh, we, we, what, what we can see there, the most difficult is uh, that we, how to deal with cyber crimes, which is immense, and what we have to do. Firstly, we, we need to invest more in order to protect our networks. We need to invest in research and development in order to have uh, uh, internal uh, products and services. And also, we have a huge challenge in terms of human, uh, human skills. Um, there is a report that says that we, we are lacking 150,000 security engineers in our market. So uh, those are some uh, issues that we have to deal with. So I'd, like, uh, I'd love to, to answer more questions at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jefferson, for sharing with us your thoughts and views. I'm sure that it was very useful for all of us. So. Let me give the floor to our next speaker. So, dear Lisel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, and uh, I'd like to add my thanks um, and uh, to everyone for joining this session today, and also um, commenting on the, the level of interest um, in this topic. Um, and I uh, hope I can share some some of the activity that the United States has been undergoing and, um, and, and talk a little bit about the work here at ITU. Um, I am in the State Department's Office of the Coordinator for Cyber Issues and what that means is that I am on the policy side of the conversation, not the wired side of the conversation. Um, I really appreciated that, uh, that illustration of something that we've been working on for many years, which is basically the, the translation of, the, the, of these issues between the, the technology and the technologists and policymakers and um, uh, trying to bridge that translation gap uh, because we do definitely speak in different terminology, different languages, and that has been a challenge over the course of time. So I, I really did appreciate that illustrative, <laughs> um, illustrative view. Um, so, Jefferson, I may have to um, um, copy that from you sometime. Thank you. <laughs> um, let me start by saying the uh, United States has been looking at cybersecurity issues for some time, and I would say that we've had an iterative um, a approach to our policies regarding cybersecurity. Um, way back in the day, uh, we had a, a, a cybersecurity strategy that tried to, it was released in 2003, and it tried to at least articulate some of the th uh, challenges that we were dealing with with regard to uh, cybersecurity, um, rather than put forward a strategy, I would say. Um, it was a good foundational document, but of course many years later in 2010 and 2011, uh, we knew that we needed to do something more that was a little more strategic and forward-looking. Um, so the then Obama administration put forward a cyberspace policy review assuring a trusted and resilient information and communication infrastructure. And one of the things, it did many things with regard to what we needed to do with our federal networks and our critical infrastructure, um, but one thing it, it called out was a need for international cooperation. So one of the things that was then um, came out in May of 2011 was our international strategy for cyberspace and it looked at a number of things that um, that uh, impact the um, stability and security of cyberspace including international security which is really how we view state um, state on state behavior 
or the activities of states. The second is cybersecurity due diligence, which is more uh, things like how do you protect your own networks, whether you're in the government or whether you're in uh, the critical infrastructure or whether you're in large companies or academic institutions or even individual users, and that's where even things like awareness come in. Um, cyber defense was another one. Jefferson mentioned uh, cyber defense, which is also a key area of how our um, uh, military protects their own networks. One thing we also talk about is internet governance, uh, how the internet is governed and maintained and reflects the multi-stakeholder nature of the development uh, and innovation of the networks as well as how it's run. Um, and the next one is internet freedom, the importance of the freedom of, of the rights that we have online, we also, offline, we also have online. Um, and the importance of freedom of expression um, online. And then lastly, looking at economic development and capacity building. Now, I mentioned all of those issues to explain that we don't look, that we needed to look at cybersecurity across the spectrum of things that uh, might impact it. So we can't look just at the security items itself or just what, um, state behavior or just the behavior of our critical infrastructure or um, and, and neglect the, uh, the, the users um, online and not talk about how they impact what uh, the impact on them. So the approach was really an integrated approach. Mm -hmm. And it was a very um, arduous approach to work with all of the, uh, the agencies within the United States government as well as with our stakeholder community to, to elaborate that, in, uh, that integrated approach to our international strategy. And that has been a very good framework for some time. But of course, we have a new administration, so now we have a new executive order. In May of 2017, the administration issued Executive Order 13800 on strengthening the cybersecurity of the federal networks and critical infrastructure. So much like my colleagues from the United Kingdom, we are uh, looking at a new, uh, new strategy that builds on our existing work. One thing that's very important to note in there are three main sections to the new uh, executive order. Uh, one is focusing on um, the cybersecurity of our federal networks. One is reflecting the security of our critical infrastructure. And then the one that's more pertinent to my work at the State Department and perhaps our work here in the ITU is cybersecurity for the nation that talks about uh, deterrence uh, concepts as well as international co cooperation. But one important thing is that the policy set forth in that section is to ensure that the internet remains valuable for future, in, uh, future generations. It is the policy of the executive branch to promote an open, interoperable, reliable, and secure internet that fosters efficiency, innovation, communication, and economic prosperity. And that is something that we um, bring, I think, bring forward from all the existing work that we have done. There are some reporting that are required out of the new executive order. So many of my colleagues and uh, our team have been diligently working on those um, uh, reports. One was uh, um, several agencies had to articulate it, their uh, international priorities with regard to cybersecurity. Um, secondly, there's a report on deterrence and protection on how we, how we deter those that might uh, uh, um, Dear take uh, we, we have lack of time. Two minutes? So not two minutes, uh, just 30 <laughs> seconds, please. 30 seconds, okay. So what, uh, happy to talk about ways in which the um, ITU can um, uh, foster its work, but we think the work of the, uh, on question 3-2, the national strategies that reflect the kinds of things that we've been talking about here and sharing those experiences with uh, colleagues from around the world. Um, and happy to answer questions. Sorry to take the time. Thank you very much for your useful information and good insight of what's going on from your perspective, from the perspective of your current job. Our next speaker is Mr. Berengai, and uh, last but not uh, least, but not last. So mm -hmm. you have the floor, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, and. Um, we, we are also quite glad and happy to be um, speaking on our perspectives or our understanding of, uh, of, of the cybersecurity space uh, from the Internet Society. 
The Internet Society really is a, is a global organization dedicated to ensuring that the the internet is uh, is open, the open supporting the open development, evolution, and the use of the internet. Uh, for the for 25 years, we we have been working through our communities to promote technologies uh, that keep the internet safe, secure, and that advocates for policies that enable universal uh, access. The Internet Society is also the home, uh, the organizational home to the Internet Engineering Task Force. And um, I'll probably uh, speak um, to two initiatives that we are currently supporting as the Internet Society. One that probably took, um, is at a, at a global level. And I'll also speak, speak, speak briefly about uh, the initiatives that we have done in, um, in Africa or we, in, in some developing countries. Uh, the first initiative um, is uh, the Global Commission for, for cyber, <coughs> cyber Stability, e, which is uh, helping to promote uh, the mutual uh, awareness and understanding among cyberspace uh, communities, working on issues uh, related to international cyber security, e, and, and most importantly, finding ways to, to link uh, these dialogues on, on, on international uh, security with uh, the new uh, communities um, that are being created by the cyber spaces. Uh, um, we, we, we have also uh, focused our attention um, particularly on developing countries. I, I think uh, uh, we, we, we may all agree that uh, uh, the capacity issues that my colleagues have mentioned, uh, these gaps are even more uh, pronounced in, in developing countries. And uh, in 2014, uh, the African Union uh, Commission um, uh, passed uh, the, uh, the, the African Union Convention on Cyber Security and Personal uh, Data Protection. And there's a way of um, e, e assisting in, in, in facilitating the implementation of, uh, of, of this convention. The, the Internet Society partnered with the African Union Commission to develop uh, the um, internet, um, internet Infrastructure Guidelines. I, I've actually brought a few copies for those that may want a hard copy, but you can also um, be able to, uh, to get these documents uh, online. The understanding really was just based on an analysis that we um, observed Maybe I'll, I'll be happy to share some few statistics. Uh, for example, currently, the, out of the 54 countries in Africa, only 30 countries have uh, cyber cyber crime laws. So you, you can see the daring gap there. And um, just about 11 countries are currently implementing comprehensive uh, policies on data privacy and, and legislation. So th these gaps uh, sort of indicate um, the need uh, to focus our resources, uh, particularly in developing countries, and um, Africa, the African region, also being um, being being um, a priority uh, issue. So, with the, the security infrastructure um, guidelines, uh, the intention really was just to recommend some some critical actions uh, for various uh, stakeholders uh, to take uh, on on on. Um, building or strengthening the, the internet infrastructure security. And uh, this, these actions we, uh, are actually tailor-made uh, for the African cyber environment. E, e also looking at um, the, the various um, e capacity issues uh, that relates to you know, shortage of skilled human resources, uh, the limited resources, particularly financial, and uh, also the, 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 the expertise and, and the level of awareness. I, I think my colleagues also touched a, a bit on that. And one of the uh, recommendations that we are pushing for is, is also we, we, with the African Union is, is uh, the formation of an Africa-wide um, cyber security collaboration and coordination committee that uh, also look at uh, these issues and we continue to um, recommend um, best practices from other regions. I'll end there, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Verengai. It's right on time. <laughs> so now we have a time to open the floor for the audience. So the floor is open for questions. Please introduce yourself, self and the 
name the panelists that you want to ask. I'm Senator Duro Jaye from Nigeria, Nigeria Communications Commission. I thank all the speakers for contributing to our knowledge of what they are doing. Maybe because uh, Madam uh, Franz from USA was not allowed to complete what she wanted to say, I was very anxious to hear what she has to say about the serious allegation of intervention of a country in the American presidential election last year. How far have you gone in saying whether it is true or false? Then two, whether, as Mr. Mbaka said, other speakers have brochures or information leaflets that we go around this large audience. At least I'm interested in getting the written uh, scripts of all the intervention because they're very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Lisel, you have the floor. Thank you very much for your question. I just will refer to the comments made by the administration in um, addressing the issues with regard to our election um, and uh, the, the there are not only issues with regard to the um, uh, problems that we saw with it, but also um, the opportunity that we had to work with all of our election um, municipalities within our states and uh, local communities to shore up their cybersecurity as well. One thing that did happen after that was um, that our elector electoral systems were then designated as critical infrastructure and our departments and agencies work with them very closely and continue to keep uh, working with them on what they can do to protect themselves from things like that. So on the higher level, of course, I defer to, defer to the comments made by the administration, but, it, um, but it, you know, we all have these issues with b ways in which we can do better to protect our, to protect our networks. So we have a lot of hands at the moment, but just I will give the floor one minute, uh, 30 seconds to, to Mr. Mabika. Uh, to, to answer on the second question regarding the report. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, so we, uh, I, I brought a few copies, but uh, I will be happy to share this information. And uh, for those that may, may, may want uh, the physical copies, I'll be happy to. <coughs> OK, thank you. So next question, please. Uh, on the back, on the last row, the gentleman was uh, asking the floor first. Good morning. Um, my name is um, Dr. Dixon Oswala. I'm from Telecoms Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. My question to the panel is this. Um, from the um, United States and from the United Kingdom, I don't hear anything about partnerships and collaborations internationally and regionally. And um, when my um, colleague from ISOC spoke, he made reference to like there have been some deliberations at the regional level between countries and they took into consideration differing socioeconomic factors because not all countries are at the same level or threshold of economic development. Secondly, um, like I'm of the mindset that um, cybersecurity globally as a whole should involve other countries and other regions. And I'll give a perfect example. Um, small island developing states in, in the Caribbean, different countries are at different levels of economic development. And for instance, we have the HM 2016-2021 um, National Cyber, Cyber Security Strategy for the UK, and we have the one for the United States. Has there been any collaboration? Or are there any future plans for collaboration? So that in terms of implementation, which should, which should be the key word here, which strategy would better fit the current realities which different developing countries are actually facing? Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisel. Then Heather, please. 
thank you very much for your question, uh, not only because uh, because it's a good one, but it allows me to touch on something that I wasn't able to um, to capture in my few minutes. But um, we absolutely, you've raised two very important points. One is on cooperation and collaborative efforts, and there are many examples of those, not only touched on by ISOC, but we can talk about some of the regional um, venues, but also that there's not one single solution. There's not one single solution for any one entity. There's not one single solution for any one country. And so you have to look at these in your own context, these kinds of things in your own contexts to be able to apply um, any number of uh, uh, practices or solutions for, for what your situation is. Um, but with regard to cooperation, it's not only there's, there's any number of way and any number of venues for such collaboration. Each of the regional organizations, and we are engaged in many. For example, the Organization of American States has programs on cybersecurity, both capacity building but also developing uh, norms of behavior. We work within the, um, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. We work within APEC and the telecommunications aspect um, of cybersecurity and the development of C certs. Um, so there are a number of ways in which we collaborate, not only in the ITU, um, but uh, and, and provide not only um, uh, integrated discussions about what best practices might be, but also there are a number of ways in which we do provide capacity building in regions um, that where there is a greater greater need, either by region or by country. So there are. Um, um, there are a number of cooperative efforts going on. One that I don't know if you mentioned or not, but one area to to look to, to for some of these collaborative efforts also is the Global, Global Forum of cyber, for Cyber Expertise, which has been developed to, uh, for lack of a better word, match make um, uh, and find partnerships with regard to capacity building on cybersecurity, <coughs> developing national strategies, and developing uh, CERTs. And that's a global program that was launched at the um, um, uh, Global Conference on Cyberspace in The Hague. And the next conference of that and the next meeting of the GFCE will be in India in November. Thank you. Thank you, Lucille. Uh, Jefferson would like to add something. Yes, please, before yes. we give the floor to, to Heather. Yes, uh, uh, thank, thank you. Um, I was just, uh, that, that, uh, that, was a, that was really a good question, and uh, i just like to, to iterate that there is no uh, common, only one solution for establishing a plan, or um, there will maybe, uh, this, it will be difficult to find a, the best plan, or, or, or all they are so, so different in scope and analysis, so, and they are very specific for each country. But um, by, by reading many of them, I could see that there are some commonalities uh, among many. Uh, one, one of these uh, common ground is the need to have international cooperation. Uh, that's extremely important, and you, you can see this written in different forms, but the concept is there in, in many different um, national plans. The need also for research and development um, is also there, and uh, I, can, I can see also the the, the different roles and, and the need to work together with public and, and private sector and academia, those three or uh, four bases for the development of the cybersecurity project or sector in your country would, hi would highly depend on the cooperation among those uh, actors in, in your country. If uh, the, the, the other commonality would be on capacity building, that's extremely important. Uh, so, sometimes you, you have, uh, you, in, in case of Brazil, you have some courses for cybersecurity, but they are, they are spread, they are not connected, and they promote only a few um, courses, and they are actually in, um, graduating just a, f a few uh, students, would, which wouldn't be enough. Um, to, to correspond to the immense challenge that we have in the market. But if there is something different from one national plan to another, it would be the, the, how you organize institutionally uh, your country, your government, to deal with the, the challenges. So, uh, and, and I think this is the most important one. Uh, we are quite different countries here, and, and, uh, and sometimes you need one more, more than one strategy to find the proper way to work uh, 
within your government to deal with all the different areas of cybersecurity. So maybe the military can, can respond faster to this because this is maybe more imminent and, and they have the skills or they, they know how to do this much faster than we do in civil work, in civil service. But how we, how we establish our institutions to, to work with all the aspects of cybersecurity is a huge challenge. Sometimes you see a national agency for this. Sometimes you establish this, but it doesn't work. Sometimes you have a national coordination in the presidency or in the prime minister office. Sometimes it works, sometimes it, it won't work. So um, the, the, be the best experiences that I, uh, I'm, I'm seeing now is no matter if an agency or an office, what you must have in your government, and um, uh, we, we are working in, in Brazil also in this, is uh, you must have at least an authority. Uh, this authority, this, this authority uh, has to have budget, but also, and more, more important, legitimacy to do with this. And, that's, and, and then I come back. What is legitimacy in this? Try to, try to, to split the roles, try to work with the civil society, with uh, the, the private sector as well, and, and the various different is fears of the government that deals with security and, and uh, infrastructure as well. Because you cannot deal with this uh, thinking just about telecommunication or thinking just about in, in one of the sectors involved. You have to put everyone together. But for this to work, you have at least, you, you need to have one authority. Thank you, that's all. Sorry. Thank you, Jefferson. Heather, do you have a comment on the, the answer on the first question from the gentleman from the last row, please? Thanks, and, and thank you for the question. It's a really good question. Um, I, I think, to, to some degree, I, I would definitely echo the points that, that Liesl and, and Jefferson have made about um, having a, a tailored national strategy. I, I think it's, it's really important that national strategies fit the national governmental structure, that they are appropriate for the national problem. Um, but, as, as my esteemed colleagues have said, there is no one-size-fits-all picture and solution to, um, to, to this issue. Um, what we in the UK feel is really important is having international collaboration as a key part of our national strategy. Um, so we, we do place a, a lot of importance on that. And, and Liesl made, made a, a very good point about there is, there is no one international system that will work and often responding at the regional level is, is, is a very effective way to, to respond. And we certainly, within the UK, um, as, as current members of the EU, um, we, we do a lot of work uh, sort of with our EU partners, and that's a really sort of fundamental way that, that we're shifting and shaping our, our own response. Um, so something else that I would also add to this is the importance of the national cert um, and to get international collaboration right, it's really important that your national cert is set up um, and is is able to respond and, and collaborate internationally. Um, and, and Jefferson made the points about uh, capacity building, and and for us in the UK, capacity building is a, is a really sort of important role that we feel we can play. Um, we we dedicate a significant amount of our overseas development assistance to capacity building in a number of countries across the globe, um, and and we'll continue to do so. Thank you, Heather. Obviously, there is no silver bullet for cybersecurity threats. There is no single recipe for cybersecurity issues. So, next question, please. We have a little bit of time. Yes, this gentleman here in the middle. Yes, you, please, go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm from Nigeria, University of Nigeria and Super. Um, one of the issues raised here, if my memory is correct, is capacity. And um, there's this tendency that availability and accessibility of end user equipment will permeate everybody in the world. And there's a cyber security problem. What modalities are we adopting towards modeling these security issues identification at very micro level so that it will grow to a very worldwide le level? Two, what awareness are we creating 
to be able to combat this thing at the source, at the grassroots level, maybe a bottom-top approach. Thank you very much. So, thank you. I would rather say that it was a comment, but however, I will give the opportunity to the panelists to answer. So, any which who would like to, to give some additional clarification on this? I, I might I might just quickly uh, refer to what you said at the end of that question. Uh, and one thing that we found really important in the our UK experience is ensuring that the people at the very top of the system, so your prime ministers and your very senior ministers, understand exactly what the issue is. And uh, Jefferson referred to uh, Theresa May, our, our prime minister's comments in, in his response uh, earlier on. And I think when you've got that support from your senior government officials, that, that really helps and, and, and helps you to build and get that capacity. Thank you. Yes, please. But first of all, we had a gentleman from Nepal there. So please introduce yourself and then the next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm just raising the issue of uh, since cyber crime is uh, across jurisdictions and we don't have a single international treaty where uh, the membership is growing. So back in 2001, the Budapest Convention was opened for signature. And 2007, ITU is leading the global cybersecurity agenda. Is there any possibility that ITU brings this uh, kind of international treaty, either follow the Budapest Convention or a different kind of treaty that every <coughs> ITU member becomes the member of that kind of international convention? Thank you. It seems to me that this question is directed to the ITU. Am I right? So. I have uh, here with us uh, our director, deputy director, so if anyone might question, might try to answer to give some clarification, rather clarification than question, or I can do by myself, it depends. Just maybe to give a chance to the uh, director for short comment if he is willing to provide us his thoughts. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Of course, this is a very important issue, as you can see here in this room, by the number of people who are present. The room is totally packed. I think that we have to be, how, do, how do, would I say it? We have to do what we know to do very well. So in ITU, we are a technical organization. We are created as a technical organization. This Cyber security is not new for us. We were dealing with the security of networks for a long time, for ages. So cyber security is just an extension of how we, are, we, we know how to do. Having said that, as someone said, we are working, when you talk about uh, um, cyber security, or cyber crime, or whatever, whatever is cyber or something, we have to look at the ecosystem. We have got other organizations that are very, whose mandate will, will cover cyber crime. The IT mandate so far doesn't cover cyber crime. That's fine. But when it comes to technical issues on cyber security, we have a say. So what we did actually, we are cooperating with another UN agency, UN ODC, United Nations Office on Drug and Crime, that have the, have the mandate on the crime side of the business, we are cooperating with them in the way that we can work together. So I would say, let's try to cooperate uh, across agencies and across organizations, across, together with the private sector, to tackle the issue, not to try to bring everything under one umbrella that may maybe create some confusion. So my answer to this one is that, of course, uh, the Budapest Convention was done by the European, European Union and uh, a lot of members subscribe to it, but of course, ITU can always bring it, uh, its uh, its skills and competencies when it comes to implementing it, particularly on the technical side. Since I have the world, the, 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 the mic, may I abuse of it? Okay, thank you. I think that when we're talking about cyber security in this room here or elsewhere, I have the impression that I'm not sure we all meant the same thing. 
for some people, some country, or some organizations, or some private sector, cyber security is something very high level, where that involves defense issues, involve, uh, I would say, international relation issues. But when we take the majority of developing countries, when I'm talking about cyber security, I'm just talking about a search, a computer incident response team, and capacity building, awareness raising of their communities to protect their children and technical capacity to, to, to make the state work. So maybe we have to make a distinguish that level. At what level are we talking? When you make, mix the two levels, sometimes make, in making the debate quite difficult. So um, I think that what I want to appeal to all of you here is that as we continue this legitimate debate at very high level about a lot of things, let's just, in the frame of ITUD, start thinking, giving a minimum, I say a minimum and basic infrastructure to the developing countries and the required capacity building for them to be part at least of the ecosystem of the cyber security so they can also contribute to the debate at the other level. So I think that this is uh, what ITUD is as a platform and I would like you to use it for, uh, as, for such platform. And finally, when it comes to cooperation, I would like just to remind us something I read and I kept in my mind for a long time. It is a Philadelphia Declaration of the International Labor Organization in 1994. And one of the bases of the ILO says, poverty anywhere constitutes a danger to prosperity everywhere. And cyber security is the same. A weakness in cyber security anywhere will it represent a danger for the cyber space everywhere. Can we get that in mind in whatever we do and focus on that and make sure we, cons we, we constitute a, a strong cyber space as the time we are talking about artificial intelligence, as the time we are talking about big data and all those things, particularly arti artificial intelligence. Can we, as an ICT community, provide humanity with something that is strong and secure so they can build their own application on it? This is a question I'm asking to all of you here. We may not have the answer here, but let's look at, see in this direction. I thank you very much. Thank you, Director, for sharing with us your inspiring thoughts and vision of ITU regarding the cybersecurity. I'm afraid that another meeting will start very soon. It's CITEL meeting. We have time only for one question. This gentleman here, please. He was asking for the thank floor. You. Thank you, Chairman. My name is Hamid Rawahi from Oman. In fact, it's not a question, just a high-level comment for the panelists and the ITU. The issue of security is not new. It started many years back from security, IT security, and until the... Our problem is that we are always play the role of reactive. Technology introduced, we react. And then we build strategy and so forth. I think, in my view, that the technology partner should be in the center of discussion. Whoever introduce any technology should be really a part of discussion to ensure that they're part of enforcing and introducing the security. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Delegate from Oman, for sharing your thoughts with us and experience. And maybe we can give the floor to our gentleman in the first row for just 30 seconds, please. Yes. Yes. You have the floor. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, I would thank all the speakers for their enlightening uh, inputs. Uh, I thank uh, my uh, friend from, I think it was Nigeria, I just a comment and then I will ask a question. Uh, I thank the friend from Nigeria who raised the point on accessibility and my intake uh, as a delegate from the Internet Society is that uh, we have to make policies all inclusive. Uh, 
I appreciate the work that countries, states, organizations, organizations have been doing. Uh, but in my opinion, what uh, we can do better is that we can uh, integrate the accessibility standards and their related talks into the policy, planning, design, and implementation. So until or unless you uh, and and what wrong we have been doing is that we have been trying to treat accessibility as a separate or as an add-on secondary project. Accessibility has to be integrated in our policy, I repeat, plan, design and implementation. Until it is not integrated in that, in all of these steps, uh, we'll all be wasting our uh, time, money and resources. Because once you build a project and start uh, adding accessibility to the projects, it is more costly and takes more time. Uh, my question to our speaker from United States, uh, the lady, is that you talked about deterrence uh, and you also talked about uh, cooperation. So to me, this, this uh, integration is very uh, interesting that how would you reconcile these two concepts, deterrence and uh, what you call uh, cooperation. And uh, on the related topic, there was uh, a couple of weeks back, there was a report that Russia has... Sorry to interrupt you. We don't have too much time. We are already round of time. Let's give a chance maybe to the Lisel to respond on your question. We have to leave out this room. Okay, Thank I you. leave it here. Deterrence and rec uh, cooperation reconciliation. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your comment and for your question, um, because it's a good one. Um, we certainly don't, there, <laughs> comments have been made throughout the, the, throughout the session today about the global nature of cyberspace and the global uh, issues of cybersecurity. And I think that precisely is why deterrence is not something we would do alone. Um, either either as a government alone or as an um, with us so we rely on our partners both in the stakeholder community as well as with other partners around the world so that's one element of our our efforts on cooperation is to find um, ways to coalesce efforts to deter malicious behavior on uh, in cyberspace, and that requires cooperation. It's not the only aspect of cooperation, but it is a, it is one of them. So I would say that they're part and parcel, not uh, something that needs to be rationalized. But thank you for your question. It's a good one. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you very much for your patience, for the, the dynamic interaction. Thank you very much to the panelists. And I apologize to CITEL. For, for to be late now. I sincerely apologize to Sitel for occupying the room longer than it was expected.